I'm going to talk today about our course themes and especially how they relate to people's experiences and what we know from research about high quality education and in particular math education. One thing about education is that people develop a lot of everyday views or ideas about teaching and education. They have lots of exposure to it as a field. If someone finishes high school, that means they were in school for you know K through 12, that's 13 years. Uh, future teachers then go to college. Families interact with schools and teachers. And then we have lots of portrayals of education and teaching in the media. So through this, people develop a lot of ideas about, about education and what it should look like. Related to this is that in our society, we often undervalue teaching as a profession. We often teach, treat, treat it as something that doesn't have any special knowledge that people need to master to be good at it. So we might say, you know, as long as you know math, you could be a math teacher. And we don't acknowledge that there's actually some real expertise involved, not just in knowing the math, but in how to teach it effectively. So these two things combine to result in people who really strong form pretty strong um, intuitive ideas or beliefs about education, about what they think it should look like, about what they think good math teaching should look like. So this makes education pretty tricky as a field because, as I just said, everyone kind of thinks they're an expert and they have all these everyday experiences that reinforce this belief. Um, and then cu coupled with that is this pretty widespread belief that education and learning is really highly individualized, that there aren't general principles to how to be a good teacher. So we might say, you know, every teacher has their own philosophy or style or approach, and it's really up to them to pick the one that works best for them. And that runs counter to what we actually know, which is that we have some real evidence about some good underlying teaching practices and what they look like. This is coupled with the fact that education research is complicated though. It's hard to do. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's a complex process. Studying any social phenomenon is difficult. People are variable and, and um, approach things differently. In teaching, you have the teacher, you have the students, you have the classroom culture, you have a classroom situated within a school, which might have its own cl culture and climate. You have administrative forces, you have district level policies, state and national level policies. We also have broader social issues like students coming to school hungry or inequities in how we fund schools. So there's a lot of factors that affect how people might learn. And so because of this, there's some real expertise and nuance to understanding edu educational research. And so therefore we see sometimes people improperly apply re-educational findings and then conclude that they don't work. Sometimes they misunderstand what's really being argued or claimed. And therefore there's often a sort of a distrust of educational research. And, and again, back to this idea that, well, there's not really any general principles we can follow. It's just everyone's own style. So if we have this sort of messy landscape that we're dealing with, the question is, what do we actually know? And I'm going to talk about for our course, this course will have a point of view. It's going to have a perspective on effective math teaching. Now, partially that comes from my own experiences having worked with teachers and kids. But I want to highlight that my experiences and how I understand them and talk to you about them are filtered through a lens of research. At this point, we have decades of research. Um, the vast majority of it done in actual classrooms or on actual classroom practice with real kids that, that lead, has led to some pretty consistent findings. So I'm not just drawing on my personal experiences, I'm drawing on those experiences in light of a large body of research. And then these findings are reinforced or advocated by really every major professional and scholarly organization in the field of math ed. So it's not sort of my point of view that I'm sharing with you in this class, it's the field's point of view. And I do want to point out that although um, educational policy is a place where we often don't see as much influence from research as we could, to some extent, some of the findings about how kids learn mathematics and how that process develops has been reflected in the Common Core standards and the Ohio Learning Standards, which are based off the Common Core. Um, there are holes and places where they got it wrong, but the broad strokes follows a lot of this research. So despite widespread agreements about the kinds of teaching we're going to talk about this semester, these ideas run counter to a lot of people's intuitive beliefs about teaching and what we see in a lot of classrooms. So we have really excellent examples of math teaching in the U.S., but it, they're, they're not necessarily widely practiced across the U.S. because we haven't done a good job building up the infrastructure that's needed to really support teachers and support schools in doing this kind of teaching.